In this video, we're going to take a closer look at advanced projectile motion problems using kinematic equations. Our first problem states that a ball is launched at an angle of 45 degrees above the ground at 16 meters per second. What is the maximum height the ball reaches? We start by making a note of the given variables and what we're solving for. The ball's initial velocity is 16 meters per second, so we write that down and the ball is launched at an angle of 45 degrees. Part of that initial velocity lies in the vertical, y direction, and part of it is in the horizontal, x direction. We're going to figure out the maximum height the ball reaches, y sub max. Let's think about what kinematic equation we can start with that fits the variables we're given. We are solving for a variable in the y direction. Gravity is the only force acting on the ball and is causing it to accelerate and decelerate in this direction. We can use one of our four kinematic equations to help us solve. The second equation has an initial and final velocity, a constant acceleration, and a vertical displacement, y. Since we want to solve for the maximum height, we know that the ball's vertical velocity at that point is zero. That's the final velocity. The ball's height is a vertical displacement from the ground. So this equation will let us solve for the maximum height of the ball. The final vertical velocity of the ball, when it's at its highest point, is zero. The initial velocity of the ball in the y direction, v sub yi, equals the initial velocity of the ball times the sine of the angle at launch. We find this by taking 16 meters per second times the sine of 45 degrees, which makes our initial velocity in the y direction 11.3 meters per second. Now we arrange our kinematic equation to solve for y sub max. We know our final velocity in the y direction is equal to zero. So let's make that term zero in our equation. Subtracting v sub yi squared, dividing both sides by 2a, leaves us with y sub max equal to negative the initial velocity in the y direction, squared divided by two times the acceleration due to gravity, a. Plugging our known values into the equation, we find that the maximum height the ball reaches is 6.5 meters. The next problem involves solving for the position and velocity of a projectile after it has traveled for several seconds. A batter hits a baseball, so it leaves the bat with an initial speed of 37 meters per second and at an initial angle of 47.8 degrees. Find the baseball position and velocity when t equals 3.5 seconds. As always, with projectile motion problems, we write down what we're given and what to solve for. We know the initial speed of the baseball, 37 meters per second, we know it left the bat at an angle of 47.8 degrees. We want to know the ball's position and velocity after t equal to 3.5 seconds. Let's solve for the position first in the x direction and then in the y direction. If we consider only the motion in the x direction, we know that our ball is not accelerating in the x direction, since no force is acting on it in this direction. The only equation we can use in the x direction is our constant velocity equation v equals x over t. Our velocity in the x direction is always the same along our journey, since the ball doesn't accelerate and moves at a constant velocity in the x direction. It is equal to the initial velocity, which is 37 meters per second, times the cosine of 47.8 degrees, equals 25 meters per second. Time is 3.5 seconds, and we're solving for the horizontal position of the ball, x at this time. When we rearrange our equation, we find that the x position of the ball equals the velocity in the x direction times the time. The x position of the ball at 3.5 seconds equals the velocity in the x direction, 25 meters per second times 3.5 seconds. This equals 87.5 or 88 meters. Find the ball's vertical position at time 3.5 seconds, we use one of our acceleration equations. Of the four, which one should we use? It looks like we have enough information to use the third equation. y equals initial velocity in the y direction times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. Look at what we know. Our initial velocity in the y direction is equal to the initial velocity of 37 meters per second times the sine of 47.8 degrees, which equals 27.4 meters per second. Time is 3.5 seconds. Acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. 
When we plug our values into our equation, we get y equals 27.4 meters per second times 3.5 seconds plus one half times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times 3.5 seconds squared this equals 36 meters. So the position of the baseball at time equals 3.5 seconds is 88 meters in the x direction and 36 meters in the y direction. Now what about the ball's velocity at 3.5 seconds? To find it, we need to solve for the y velocity after three and a half seconds, v sub y f, and the final velocity in the x direction, v sub x, and use the Pythagorean theorem to find the final resultant velocity of the ball. To solve for y velocity, we will use the kinematic equation that says final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. We already determined that the initial velocity of the ball in the direction is 27.4 meters per second. We have our time, 3.5 seconds, and acceleration, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We plug all of these values into our equation to find our final velocity at this time in the y direction is negative 6.9 meters per second. Finally, we'll find the x velocity of the baseball. We know the ball's velocity in the x direction is constant. It will always equal the same number as long as the ball is in the air. It is the same number we got for x direction velocity as before. 37 meters per second times the cosine of 47.8 degrees. That equals 25 meters per second. Now we use these two values as legs of our triangles and use the Pythagorean theorem in order to solve for the resultant, our final velocity. Final velocity is equal to the square root of the final velocity in the x direction squared plus the final velocity in the y direction squared. When we plug in our values, we see the final velocity is equal to the square root of 25 meters per second squared, which is 625 meters squared per second squared plus negative 6.9 meters per second squared, which is 47.6 meters squared per second squared. After we add these together, we find the final velocity is now equal to the square root of 672.6 meters squared per second squared. When we take the square root, our final answer is 25.9 meters per second. You try this final projectile problem and see if you can solve for the range the ball travels. A ball is launched at an angle of 25 degrees above the ground at 30 meters per second off the edge of a 120 meter cliff. How far from the cliff does the ball land? To begin, let's write down the information given and what we're solving for. The ball's initial direction is 25 degrees above horizontal. Its initial speed is 30 meters per second. The cliff's height, we'll call it Y sub cliff, is 120 meters. Solving for the overall range, the ball travels, x. To know how far the ball travels, we need to first figure out how long the ball is in the air. The total time the ball in the air, t sub total, equals the time it is above its launch elevation, t sub one, plus the time it is below that point, t sub two. First, let's solve for t sub one. If we're ignoring air resistance, we know that the ball's vertical velocity when it descends back to the height it was launched from is equal and opposite its initial vertical velocity. Since we're given the initial velocity, we can solve for the final velocity. Knowing initial and final velocity and acceleration and wanting to find t, which kinematic equation should we use? The first one, v sub y f equals v sub y i plus a times t is the best one. If we subtract v sub y i from both sides and divide by the acceleration a, we see that time equals final velocity minus initial velocity divided by a. The initial y velocity is 30 meters per second times the sine of 25 degrees. That equals 13 meters per second. V sub f, the vertical velocity of the ball, when it returns to its starting height is negative 13 meters per second. It is traveling in the opposite direction. a, the acceleration, equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Plugging all these numbers in, we find that t sub 1 equals 2.7 seconds. To solve for t sub 2, we use the third kinematic equation that says displacement equals v sub y i times t plus 1 half a times t squared. We know the displacement, y sub cliff, that's negative 120 meters. It is negative because it's away from the origin in the negative direction. 
The initial velocity, v sub yi, that's negative 13 meters per second, and the acceleration, a, which is still a negative 9.8 meters per second squared, since we're now speeding up in the negative direction. We want to solve for t2. We add 120 meters to both sides. Notice that this equation is now in the form of a quadratic equation. It is an equation in the form 0 equals a times x squared plus b times x plus c. The two roots of a quadratic equation are given by the formula x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c divided by 2 times a. In our case, comparing our equation solving for t sub 2 with the equation solving for x, we see that a equals 1 half times g the acceleration due to gravity, which altogether is negative 4.9 meters per second squared, b equals negative 13 meters per second, and c equals 120 meters. Plugging our values for a, b, and c into the equation, we find that the two roots of t2 are 3.8 seconds and negative 6.4 seconds. We know which root to choose, the positive one, because time cannot be negative. Looking again at our diagram, the total time the ball is in the air is t1 plus t2, or 2.7 seconds plus 3.8 seconds, which added together equals 6.5 seconds. The range the ball traveled equals its horizontal velocity, v sub x, times the total time it is in the air. We know t total, but need to solve for the velocity of the ball in the x direction. v sub x equals the initial velocity, v sub i, times the cosine of the initial launch angle, theta. V sub i is 30 meters per second, and theta is 25 degrees. Plugging those numbers in, we find V sub x is 27 meters per second. So the range of total horizontal distance the ball traveled from launch to landing is 27 meters per second times 6.5 seconds, which is 175.5 meters, which to two significant figures equals 180 meters. That's a closer look at advanced projectile motion problems using kinematic equations. For more physics in motion, go to our homepage where the entire series is available to you.